the purpose of this video is to talk, is show you how to create a frequency distribution, a frequency distribution, and draw a histogram really easily without having to worry about the class limits and having to do all that sort of by hand. Because honestly, you'll never do that in your life. In fact, I'm not. I don't think I'll even ask you on an exam. Maybe on a quiz, on a web assignment quiz, I'll ask you a little bit. But I mean, really, most of this can all be done with tech and get the important stuff out of it that way too. So this is a set of, you know, it's a data set that I, I have an old textbook, 50 brands, this is breakfast cereal, um, ultra processed food, by the way, but anyway, that's an, I, that's an aside. Um, and this is the percent of sugar that's in each of those cereals. And so what I'm gonna do is uh, with this, is I'm gonna show you how to use this one tool that, I mean, spreadsheets will do this. Uh, they, they aren't really slick about, they'll, I'm not wild about what spreadsheets do with histograms. They'll they'll do it, but um, it's 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 clunky. At least how I know how to. Maybe there's somebody who knows more about spreadsheets than I do. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna select this data and copy it to clipboard memory. And then I'm gonna go back into Canvas. And if you click on modules, and you click on, um, you've come down here. You see these online statistical tools. You're going to see me point you to this web page um, frequently throughout this course. Now, is it going to load? Uh, here we go. And what I have is, uh, you know, you've seen me use this one, but I'm going to point you towards, I think it's this one, Frequency Table and Histogram. Let's click on that link. Yep, Shoulder. This is the one. This is a fantastic, it has some good calculators here. Uh, so here's, this is going to build a histogram for us. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, clear out the data that they gave us. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, actually I don't know if I wanted to paste the brands. Let me come back here and get rid of the brands. This really only works with categorical data or quantitative data. So let me come back here and just go grab the percent of sugar. In fact, I probably shouldn't have grabbed the, the, the title, but I'm gonna tweak that and I'm gonna paste it in and I'm gonna go get rid of that percent of sugar. And I'm gonna put this here where it talks about mean SAT source scores. And I'll put my space back in there. Okay, now I'm gonna update my data and there's that data. Uh, updating the data is important because it's it's what's the last data that was used. Now I see I don't know what I see some kind of bimodal distribution that's kind of right skewed, but I want to change how that looks. So what I can do is I can see this little draggy thing, this little square. I can drag this. This makes this makes the interval skinnier or the class width skinnier. Or you can make them bigger and give you more, give you more of a, uh, a shape to what you want to make it look like. Now, remember how he said it looks right skewed? Well, I went down to four cells or four, four classes, and that looks pretty good. Um, somewhere I read, uh, you want more than three classes, less than 20, because um, if you keep it in that range, you're going to get a pretty good, pretty good histogram of what it looks. See, if I go down, to, if I go down here, you know, see how these breaks? We don't really want to have breaks if we can avoid it. Sometimes it's not, not possible. But it's also confusing having this bimodal distribution. I mean, maybe that's what I want to show, but I'd rather make it kind of more straightforward. So I'm just going to drag this. I'm going to drag this. I don't know. Maybe I want to show that this is a bimodal distribution, that there's some cereals with a high sugar content and then a bunch with a low sugar content. Maybe that's what I want to show, but I'm trying to steer you folks to using right skewed, left skewed, and symmetric. I mean, not that that's but that that's kind of where we go. I mean, we're talking about shape. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make this be I'm gonna make this be four four bins long wide and four bins, and it looks like a right skewed distribution to me. Not not a perfect one. The other thing you can do to to make the make the interval size better is to just tweak that. You can change that number right now update the interval, and then that looks, now why is that important? If you click on show frequency table, 
here's the nice bins. How you see even those bin those bin widths, those those bin limits or those uh, class limits are a little weird. We can tweak that. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna come down here. Now I'm gonna have the bin start at at zero. Let's see what it let me sometimes it won't let me start at zero. Yeah, oh it did. And there we go. Um and see how that kind of changed it? I mean, I don't know if I like that as well as it did. Uh, maybe we should change change the bin width a little bit. But anyways, what I'm trying to show you this is how do you tweak this um, and see how it's got the nice bin limits. And it says from 0 up to 16. And then they go uh, 16 is too small. So, so they're going to go there. So this would be 16.1. Or 16.01 up to up to 32, and then 32.001 up to up to 48, and then 48.01 up to 64, and that's gives us our bin. So there's our 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 uh, our frequency table. You could if you need to do a cumulative frequency table, you can throw those into a spreadsheet, do it do it by hand. Okay, so it's pretty easy to get your get the bins you want, the shape you want, and then to generate the frequency table. Then you could do a little more work with that, but I thought I wanted to show you this. this. This is a great, this is a great piece of software. Um, the other thing I can show you right now, I mean, the purpose was to do the whole frequency table. But while while I'm at it, if they have so, I have a uh, box plot. Um, let's see, is this the Shodor one? I don't know. I think this is Rossman Chance. No, this is Shodor. Okay. What you can do with the with a box plot? This this is inflexible. This is gonna you're gonna just have the ones so you can't tweak things. Because I mean, I guess that makes sense because up oh, Dan LeMay messed that one up. Where's my where's my spreadsheet? I'm not gonna grab the percent sugar here. I'm gonna type that in by hand. Fix that in. I'll, I'll update the box plot. This is percent of Sugar, and there you go. There is a there is a box plot, and we said we were thinking it was right skewed, and this confirms it was a right skewed distribution because we have you know fifty percent of the data clumped up over here, and the other fifty percent is spread out over here. So that's what makes the tail that makes the tail go to the right, which is right skewed. Um, you can show get the summary statistics. It even gives you the IQR, doesn't it? No, I guess it doesn't give you the IQR. But there you go. Okay, so let me stop this video. It's getting long. I mean, so great web page. I try to put a lot of good tools here. Uh, will you like it? I don't know. I use these. I use these all the time.